So starting with example one, it states find the midpoint of segment DE with D having the coordinates of 3, 5 and E being located at negative 4, 0. Mrs. Hogrady, get me started. How do well, I do this? You know, sometimes we see those points and we think, oh, do I have to draw a picture? Because a lot of times in geometry we say draw a picture first. But we've learned a midpoint formula that just makes that so much easier that we don't have to draw the picture this time. We know that we want to average our x values to come up with our new x, and we want to average the y values to come up with our new y coordinate. So let's go ahead and let's do that. Let's. I would go ahead and just start putting it in the parentheses of my okay. two. My and average so we're not going to we're not going to forget about those parentheses, okay. right? So what are the two x coordinates that we're going to be averaging? We're going to average the three and the negative four. And averaging mean you're going to add them up, divide by two. Add them up and divide by two. So you're adding a 3 and a negative 4. Now, another way of writing 3 plus a negative 4 would be 3 minus 4. Exactly. And then dividing by 2. And then averaging the y's, that would be... So 5 plus 0 and divide by 2. Okay, so... Now, we, be careful to always add those because now that we've done the, dis, the distance formula, we always do the difference in the x values. Here we want to add them, so just be careful with that. Yep. So we add 3 plus a negative 4, that's a... Negative 1 over 2. And then 5 plus 0. So 5 over 2. And always make sure you put your coordinates in parentheses because otherwise they're just two random numbers where to know that it is an ordered pair, a coordinate of our midpoint, we've got to use the parentheses. And is that it? That's it. That's it because those are simplified. Now you can obviously, like we talked about um, could do a decimals, few days ago, yeah. you could write this as a decimal negative 0.5 or 2.5 or 2.5, other ways of writing that. Now, just real quick before we move on to the next example, Mrs. Hellcraven mentioned, you know, you don't have to draw a picture, but a picture is always nice to kind of get a visual. So our coordinate was negative one half and five and a half. So if I graph that in a coordinate plane, negative a half would be to the left about here, and then two and a half would be up about here. And looks, there's our midpoint. Yeah, it looks pretty good. So again, you don't have to do this. This is just more of a checking purposes. All right, so the next one, they tell us the midpoint of xy is 3 comma negative 4. So notice here, they're not giving us the endpoint. They're giving us the midpoint. Oh, okay. Then they tell us that one endpoint is the y value of negative 3 comma negative 1. We're supposed to find the coordinates of the other endpoint. Well, Mrs. Palermo, thinking about this one, this is a little different. I'm not just averaging my x's and averaging my y's because we already know what the average is. We just don't know what the other coordinates are going to be for our endpoint. Okay, so because they give you the midpoint and they give you one endpoint, we can still use the midpoint formula in a sense um, and kind of work backwards in a sense. Now, one thing that I like to do is Here's an example where I may just draw a rough sketch. This is mm -hmm. not what this picture is going to look like for sure on a coordinate plane. Mm -hmm. But we know that my midpoint is at 3 comma negative 4. We know that we've got a y at negative 3 comma negative 1. And we're supposed to find x. Do we know what its x or its y values are? No, those are unknown. So I'm just going to call it x comma y is my, well, I probably, well, I'm going to use x and y even though we've got an x and y up here just because we know that it's an x coordinate and a y coordinate, x, but yeah. don't let that throw you. It's they're not lower, the same they're lower case x and y too. Exactly. <laughs> All right, so if I wanted to do it, just using these values here, if I wanted to come up with my midpoint, I know I would have to average these. So yeah. what would that look like in So an if I average, okay, so I'd have to average the x coordinate. So I'd have a negative 3 and an x, so I add those together and divide by 2, that's going to give you the x coordinate of the midpoint Which of we already three. know. Yeah. yeah. And that would be a doable equation to solve. And that's an easy and equation And then it finds the x coordinate of your other endpoint. So then what about the y's? What would be the equation okay, I'd so want to for the there? y, we would average the y coordinates that we have of the endpoint. So negative 1 and y, since we don't know that one, divide by 2. And that gets you the y coordinate of the midpoint, which is negative 4. Great. So this is kind of, in a sense, what I mean by working backwards. Yeah. When you solve an equation, you're kind of working backwards to find those unknown values. Exactly. So we've got some fractions in these equations, but hopefully we're not scared of those fractions. We know how to clear them, actually, if you want to. Multiply both sides by what? 
2. You got it. Because the 2 is going to cancel here. I'm just left with my negative 3 plus x would equal 6. And over here, if I go ahead and add that 3 to both sides. x equals 9. So that x coordinate was a 9. And the y coordinate, if I solve this one, multiply both sides by 2. I'm left with a negative 1 plus y is equal to our negative 8. And if I add my 1, y is? Negative 7. So 9 comma negative 7 would have been that other coordinate that I would have needed. And notice how Mrs. Hogravy wrote her answer. She didn't circle the x equals 9 and the y equals negative 7. She circled it as an ordered pair. And exactly. that's exactly what you want because it said find the coordinates of the other endpoint. Now, if you wanted to just get a visual of this on a picture, we said um, x was 9, negative 7, right? Uh-huh. And already, we already plotted the midpoint, which is um, labeled as m, and y, which is labeled in the picture as well. So 9, negative 7. We didn't really do a good job with this one. No. Are, we really need more graph. Here would be 5. There's just 6, estimate. 7, 8. 9 would be a little bit off to the side. And 5, 6, 7. So down over here. That would, and that would be where x is. That's, and now, notice that's not the midpoint because that's not what it said. The midpoint is m. X is the endpoint. The other end. So that would make sense. Example three um, is another one kind of like what Miss Hope Gravy just talked us through. So I'm just going to have Miss Hope Gravy just kind of help me out with this one a little bit quicker. Um, it says they give you the midpoint is negative three, negative two. They give you one endpoint is negative four, two, and then we're finding the other endpoint. So kind of like Miss Hope Gravy did, she drew a little visual. So if I drew the midpoint and said this is negative three, negative two, and you don't have to draw a visual, but I think it's kind of helpful. Maybe I start by drawing a segment. And we already know y, which is negative four, two, and the other endpoint, x, this is the question mark. So that can be just our x comma y for now. So that's what we're trying to find. That's our go-to. That will be our final answer. So we're going to set up a couple equations. So Ms. Hope Gravy. All right, so I could say that if I average the two endpoint x values, it should get me to the midpoint x value. So negative 4 plus x divide by 2, that should get me to my negative 3. And that will get you that one right there. And then for the y's, I could take 2 plus y and divide it by 2, and that should get me to my negative 2. So again, she's taking these y coordinates, and that will get you the y coordinate there. All right, so when you go ahead and solve it, let's just go down to the answer. So the x value ends up being a uh, negative 2, and the y value ends up being a negative 6. And so when you write your answer, again, you're going to write it as an ordered pair. And we could even label that x if oh, we want yeah. to for point. As Perfect. the order or the actual name of the point. And again, the picture, I'm just going to bypass that just because we. I think you guys get the idea. Yeah. We have a much more beautiful self tower in your example on your notes. But just for a rough sketch, a tower, it's just going to be a, something that's standing up straight. And this cell phone tower is bisecting an angle that's formed by the two wires that are supporting it. We're going to find the measure of the angle formed by the two wires. So we want to know this entire angle on this picture. Okay. All right, and we know that this cell tower is bisecting this angle. Well, we talked about what bisecting means. Ms. Palermo, what does bisecting tell us? Bisecting of an angle means it divides an angle into two congruent angles. So this part of the angle right here should be exactly the same measure as this part of the angle yeah. right here. Well, we already know one is 47, so that means that this other one is? 47. 47. Now, is that what they're asking for? No, it asks for the measure of the angle formed by the two wires, so basically a combination of those two adjacent bisected or congruent angles. Yeah, so now I can really use that angle addition postulate to put those two together to say if this is a 47 and this is a 47, that's going to make the whole thing 94. 94. Now you could also do, since they're the same, you could just do 47 times 2 and it gets you the same exact answer. So the measure of the angle, and again, usually the angles are named somehow, but is going to be, what, should we name it? We can name it. We need some points on the angle. Let's go ahead and name this angle 
um, WIR, missing a letter, but that's okay. So the measure of angle WIR is 94. Perfect. All right, final example. Example four it says Ray MO bisects angle LMN, find each angle measure. Okay, so in the picture, they give you some information about some angles inside of that angle. Now, I think to me, this probably is a key idea. Absolutely. When they say bisects, we know that we don't have to have, we're not using angle addition postulate necessarily to come up with some larger angle measure that they give us, but we know that those two angles are going to be congruent. Now, why wouldn't, like, why can't I just say this plus that is equal to that angle? Because that's a true statement. It why is, but help? we don't know what it is. Oh, we don't know angle. Since we don't know the overall angle, like we did in an earlier chapter or section, we knew what angle LMN would have been, and we could use angle addition postulate. Yeah. So this is kind of a keyword. And guys, that's one thing. Look for those keywords. That vocab's huge in this in this course. So bisects basically means congruent angles. Which angles are going to be congruent, Miss O'Grady? So L M O and O M N. So if I said that angle L M O, I'm just going to write that off to the side, is congruent to angle O M N. That basically means there they have the same measure. Right. So if they have the same measure, then the three x minus twenty should equal our x plus 10. Yeah, because those represent the measures of those two angles. And it says find e each angle measure in this picture. So if I solve this equation. You'd find that x is 15. So a little bit of work. We're going to bypass that. Now, am I done? No, because that's not each angle. That's just x. OK, so if it says each angle measure, how many angles do we have in this picture? Really, there's three. All right. We have the two that are congruent, and then we have that larger angle, LMN, that we could talk about as well. All right, so which angle do you want to find first? Well, just looking at this one, I would say it'd be pretty easy to take 15 plus 10. So angle? So angle OMN. So if I just do 15, add 10 to that, I get? 25. Now. Because they're bisected, those two angles, that angle right there should be congruent to LMO. So I already know, if I did my math correctly, that it should be 25. Now, it's not a bad thing to check, just to take 3 times the 15 and subtract 20 and make sure that that's true. 3 times 15, 45, 45. minus 20, it works good. Great. And then angle LMN would then, of course, have to be 50 because that would be adding the two 25s together. Yeah, and I like that Ms. Hoker we said, it's not a bad idea to check. Because sometimes, even when we do this, we'll make a little minor error with the algebra, make a mistake, and if you rely on that answer and it's wrong, then you're gonna be completely wrong on the whole thing. So just be careful with that. 